Hello everyone and welcome to the Williamson County Coaches Preview Show. I'm Jack Daniels, your host, and with me for tonight's game is the head football coaches at Independence High School, Coach Scott Blade, and the head football coach at Summit High School, Coach Scott Kiesler. Welcome, fellas. Thank you. Appreciate thank, it. Thank you for being with us. I know tonight's game is a big, big game because it's the first time these schools have played each other. Um, it's a situation where a lot of the kids at Summit know the kids at Independence. They kind of grew up together and school opens up and three years later now you're going to get the first game there down on the south end of the county but coach Kiesler you was with us last week but coach Blade I'm going to start with you and kind of let you tell us how the first two games has gone for Independence. Well uh, they've, they've gone relatively well um, our kids are you know uh, getting better each week and that's that's kind of what you want to see at this point we're real young uh, so they're getting better and they uh, you know we came out uh, against Kenwood, a good athletic Kenwood team, and uh, kind of took some lumps, uh, but came out on the other end pretty well. And then we made a big improvement, uh, still making some uh, early on mistakes that we were hoping we're correcting. But uh, the kids are kids are doing well, and the kids are practicing real well right now. Mm -hmm. The Kenwood game up at uh, Clarksville area. What what was the score of that game? Coach? It was twenty eight to six. Twenty eight to six. Yeah. So offensively, sounds like you guys were moving the ball pretty pretty well on the defense. Yeah, we, we threw the ball really well. Okay. Um, I think uh, for the last, you know, into the summer, including the summer, we really threw the ball. That's probably been our strength. Our receivers and our quarterback have played relatively well. And uh, at times we struggled running the ball. Um, and we got that on track the second half of last week a little bit better. Uh, but still, uh, that, you know, that, that's a growing process there as well. So and defensively, when uh, you know they're getting, it's a whole new defense, whole new scheme, um, and all new players. So um, uh, when they're executing, it, it's going really well, and and then when we're not, it's clearly not going well. So mm -hmm. uh, and that's with everybody, and that's the this time of the year. So um, we look forward to this week just to see how, how much improvement we've made because we felt like good improvement from week zero to week one and we felt like we've had another good week of practice. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about a little bit like, about last Friday night's game against Marshall County. Did you fall behind early in that game? Yeah, we fell behind 7 nothing, uh first series. And our kids, uh, again, came out and then just uh, got them in a third and long situation the first series and just froze up on a really simple pass. Mm -hmm. And he got, <clears throat> got split between our corner and our safety, and he's gone. And uh, so, yeah, that was uh, unfortunate, and it was, uh, uh, again, a thing we've got to correct, and we're working hard to correct. Um, but then our offense responded, started getting the ball rolling, had a couple of big plays on special teams. You know, Vic Wharton ran back a punt return. Uh, then later on in the second half, we blocked a punt. Mm -hmm. So uh, stuff like that, that those are things we work on as, as far as uh, our assignments on uh, protection and blocking schemes. And it was nice to see them execute it in a real game situation. So, but yeah, we got got behind early. The kids didn't bat an eye. We kept going forward and ended up having a pretty good game. Mm -hmm. I think you guys ended up scoring like 45, maybe something. It was like that. 49 to 14 49 at the end. 14. Yeah, and so, uh, uh, and again, one of those came off special teams. Right. And um, so, uh, a lot of positives there. Mm -hmm. Well, let's coach. Let's go to your. Who's helping you, assistant coaches, and, and if they teach at the school, let us know that. Okay, yeah, we have uh, Vic Wharton Sr. Uh, he's a defensive coordinator. He's, all, he's also a TA on campus. Okay. Uh, Greg Burns uh, is a wide receiver coach, and um, then he's also a TA on campus. Chad Gates is a TA on campus that's been there uh, for the last 10 years, I believe, and um, he's also a freshman head coach. Uh, then Mike Matthews. Uh, who last coached with uh, Gary Rankin at Alcoa uh, 15 years ago, has been out and um, just a terrific coach. We're fortunate to get him in the mm -hmm. building as a teacher, as a special ed teacher. Um, and then Lance White, our linebacker coach, uh, his wife is a new girls basketball coach, and he's in the building um, as a history teacher. Then Keith Hudson, uh, offensive line coach, um, and uh, Jonathan Boren, a defensive tackle coach, um, so and then both of those are walk-on coaches. So there's, I uh, hope I didn't miss any there, but it's me plus seven. Right, uh, right. So, and we all coach both sides of the ball. Right, right. I came down one day and watched a little bit of the practice. 
seems like you're very involved in both sides of the ball as yeah. far as practice goes. And um, the um, aspect as far as Friday night, tonight's game, uh, you concentrate mostly on the offensive side? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll uh, you know, it's a, I've never worked with any of these coaches. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really kind of doing a good job gelling for the first year. But a lot of it is not only teaching the players, it's coaching the coaches sure. on this is what we want done. This is the, how it's uh, worked in the past. And this is the recipe we think it uh, help us in the future. And um, so I am very involved all aspects of the game. And on, on uh, tonight, it's, it's mostly, uh, you know, I do call the offense. But I'm very uh, involved in defense and right. making sure we're uh, making the right substitutions and everybody's doing their job. But uh, we try and you know let you know the coaches assume more uh, responsibility there. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm involved in all aspects for sure. Right. Uh, who are some of the support staff you have? Maybe like your managers and trainers that also well, help you. Program. Yeah, Brandy Mang Mangrum is our trainer. Okay. And uh, she's got a support of probably eight girls. Oh. And uh, they do a terrific job. And Brandy does a wonderful job for us. Her husband, Roy Mangrum, uh, does our strength and conditioning mm -hmm. and helps take some of it off our plate. Um, you know, on Saturdays and Mondays, we, we lift during the season. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, Chip Leak's the Booster Club president. Uh, and he's got a whole crew uh, that keep the thing running smooth. Mm -hmm. Uh, Coach Keys, I don't mean to keep you out of this, but uh, we got to talk to you last yeah, week. Yeah, you asked so me all this last week. week yeah, so I'm with Coach Blake. About how much time, Coach, do you think that your kids, once season has started, how many hours a week do they, you know, actually do football uh, like a Monday through a Sunday? Do you bring them on in I do not. Do, I do not do Sundays, but we do do 9 to 12 on Saturdays. Okay. Um, that's something I've always done and uh, believe in. And if we watch film of the night before, um, we watch, we do a little bit of conditioning to kind of break up the soreness a little bit, and then we, we do lift. Uh -huh. um, so we think that's important to continue lift. And then those kids that need treatment, uh, sure. after they watch film, they, they may skip out of some of this, but they're getting treatment. Uh, so we can try and keep them as healthy as possible, and our strength levels is, and our conditioning levels um, where they need to be. But also, that's a, that's a big teaching day for us without going on the field and watching film and going through everything and uh, and then at the end of Saturday we turn the page mm -hmm. um, us coaches will stay a little bit longer and uh, you know uh, tie up some things but other than that um, uh, so I, as far as hours I'm we really we, we go you know uh, two hours two and a half at, you know most um, Monday Monday's probably a three hour day Tuesday and Wednesday are two to two and a half you know Thursday is an hour Mm -hmm. um, it's an hour. Uh, then we do an FCA meeting, a voluntary FCA meeting after practice on Thursday. <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, Friday they're with us all day. Sure. I mean, they're, they're, we eat at 3. Uh, we 3.30 we're watching a movie. Um, and then at 5 o'clock they're coming for a quick walkthrough. And then so there's not a whole lot of time for them to go off, get in trouble, right. do stuff like that. We, you know, we're kind of together. We're making sure they're fed, you know, uh, appropriately, and then Saturday is a three-hour deal. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Coach Kiesler, yes, talk about last Friday night's game. Kind of, do we have to? Uh, <laughs> well, let's tell, let's talk to us about it, Coach. Mm -hmm. I know uh, it's tough. I, that was a rough night. You know, I felt like coming out, uh, we had a, we had a good chance to you know play with them and, and play a lot better than we did. Um, got off to kind of a shaky start. Took the football and turned it over. Get them off the field. Uh, end up with the football again we punt uh, to them and they take it end up taking a, uh, the ball and driving it down our throat um, but still just seven to nothing mm -hmm. I mean that's you got four quarters in football have an opportunity uh, the next time they of course we go three and out again and had an opportunity the next time they uh, had the football we punt they muff it and they get it uh, and that I think was a huge overall turning point um, you know a chance to grab some momentum to even sure. up the football game um, and be right back there in it. You know, I haven't uh, been through the last two seasons we've been through, and I hate to bring it up, some of those things start creeping back into those kids' minds, I think. And that's something we've got, as coaches, we've got to find a way to break. Mm -hmm. um, the here we go again, or this didn't go right, you know. Instead of shutting down, we've got to learn to respond a little bit better. And that's on me. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I think we were outcoached. We were obviously outplayed. 
And I felt going into the game we were prepared, but apparently we weren't. Um, not to take anything away from Paige, uh, Coach Rathbone had them ready to play. They did a great job. A good group of kids, excellent quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like we kind of, you know, he was 12 or 25, and that's uh, not what he was the week before, but then they end up running the football, and it's, our kids didn't respond, um, and we probably didn't respond well enough uh, as far as making adjustments. Um, we've just got to get better. We've got to mm -hmm. keep getting better. There, there's no excuses. Uh, I don't want to hear young or, or, or new school or anything. We're three years old. We have seniors. Um, there's no more excuses. But, you know, our goal is just each week to get better. We, we focus on Summit and don't focus on the opponent. Um, We've got to improve. Mm -hmm. so. Do you put a 24-hour rule in after Friday night's game? You got 24 hours to celebrate or to, you know, be sad about it and then kind of I, move on. I mean, that kind of thing. And or? I'll tell you exactly what I told them after the game. Um, you go home and you be miserable. You be upset. I don't want you know. I I want you to go home and I want it to hurt. Mm -hmm. It should hurt. Losing should hurt in the game of football. I I don't want you to go on with it. I know mom and dad are going to be there to pat you on the back, but. Heck, if you have to, let them know. Leave me alone right now. You know, I don't feel good about this. This is not a uh, uh, football is not a game you're supposed to, to feel good once you lose. You know, obviously, I had a very bad weekend. My wife didn't really want to be around me very much. <laughs> um, but at that point, as I told the kids, you go home and uh, you be upset because we're going to be upset. I'm going back to work. Then it's time for you to go back to work. And Sunday, it's on to Independence High School. Monday. You know, we get to practice, it's all independence, and we move on. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all you can do. You just go back to work, go back to the drawing board, try to get better, and uh, see what happens. I heard Coach Jones make a comment, uh, talking about Coach Jones at the University of Tennessee, that he likes to recruit kids that hate to lose uh, more so than they love to win. Uh, do you agree with that? I do. I mean, I, that's part of it. It's not just about going out there, getting to wear a jersey, getting to eat the pregame meal. Um, you know, and just be a part of the team. Sure. I understand that there's a place for all kids that aren't maybe your superstars, your better athletes. I understand that, but um, you should hate to lose. You should hate to lose. I think it prepares you for life. Um, always, you know, being able to fight back. You know, don't get that job the first time. Keep going at it because you're so discouraged uh, that you didn't get it. Uh, find a way to correct what you made mistakes on. And I. You know, I think kids should feel like that. I don't know how many of them do nowadays, and I, it's not a, a crack at our kids or in well, general, it's just maybe society. Um, uh, but absolutely, I think you, you need kids that, that, you know, we had a couple crying in the locker room mm -hmm. after the game. That, you know, that's, that's hurt. That's mm -hmm. knowing they didn't do uh, maybe what we needed to do as a team. Um, and I respect that because I feel the same way. I may not. You know, project it the same way, but mm -hmm. uh, we all felt you know pretty bad Friday night. And every time you lose a football game, it's it's hard to get back going. But you know, as coaches, we have to. Mm -hmm. Coach Blade, you talked about bringing the kids in on Saturday morning after your Friday night game. Uh, how, how do you communicate with kids? Do you like use the L email or tweet or I mean? No, I don't tweet. <laughs> Today's technology. No, uh, no, we we have a schedule and we try and make the parents aware of that. Okay. Um, you know, on our outgoing we have an account that goes to all the parents um, but that's it's it's just um, what's expected it's not hey we're doing it this week or not doing it next week it's just that's part of our weekly you know practice routine, plan. Mm -hmm. that's part of our routine um, and I think the kids have bought into that you know a lot of there's been a lot of changes mm -hmm. uh, for sure um, but the, you know the, the kids are doing a great job of responding to all the change that has taken place and uh, it involves texting and making sure if, if they're not there, like I had, you know, we understand on Saturdays, there's things that go on with family and, um, you know, I've got two UT guys that sure. wanted to go to the opening game and mm -hmm. they communicated, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not really not a problem. We have, that happens. Mm -hmm. um, but during the week, yeah, we expect you there every day. And, you know, if you're not, you know, there should be some sort of communication, either a text or an email or a phone call. Um, and there's consequences if you're not. I mean, mm -hmm. but that's again trying to change a culture of, and create kids that are accountable. Sure. Accountable, um, and and kids that, that this is important to them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's important to us. It's important to them, and mm -hmm. not because of anything else except for the fact they've chosen to do it. Right. You know. Right. Coach Keesley, give us a scouting report on Independence for tonight's game. Fast, <laughs> <laughs> athletic, um, excellent football team, well coached. Uh, you know, we've definitely got our work cut out for us. Um, 
you know, you, you talk about the two athletes that are going to Tennessee and the kid that's going to Missouri, but overall, um, all the way across the board, special teams, defense, offense, uh, excellent football team. You know, they're not ranked number four in the state for no reason. Um, you know, I, obviously the speed factor. Quarterback's very efficient um, with what they ask him to do. Um, can throw the football. Seems like a very tough kid. Uh, their offensive line, again, are very well coached. Um, they get it to the kids out in space and, and let them make plays. And, uh, you know, Coach Blade uh, does a great job with that. That's, that's what you do with kids like that. Mm -hmm. Defensively, you know, you hear all offseason they're going to be undersized up front and they'll be replacing players. They get after it. I mean, and that's a lot of what defense is, is running to the football with a purpose um, and gang tackling. Mm -hmm. and, and they do that. Uh, and, you know, we recognize that on film. And like I said, I, I coached against Independence uh, in that state championship in 2007, and I'm not sure this team isn't better than them. Mm, okay. Well, Coach Blade, as far as talking to you earlier before the season started, you were a little bit concerned about your interior people up front, that you were going to be young and, and uh, maybe undersized a little bit. How has that been panning out for you? Well, we, we still are young and undersized. Um, that. That hasn't changed. Yeah. Uh, we just uh, we're, we're proud of the kids because they, they come to practice every day and they and they work and mm -hmm. it's that's not I think you know, my voice is a, a little raspy today and it's not just happening. We're working hard uh, to try and get them up to you know the biggest. If, if you remember back when you played that freshman to sophomore, each year the game slows down a little bit for you. But when you're young, it seems like everything's going in sure. fast motion, and so we're. You know, we're just trying to get as simplified as simple as possible um, for the guys. We don't run a bunch of, uh, I don't have any, you know, we run a couple of different defenses and this front remains the same and we are who we are. Um, and so we're just trying to keep it simple for the kids to help them play faster um, because that, that will be our, our only chance of having success is we got to be in great condition and then we've got to play you know, keep it simple for the kids so that they can play fast. Mm -hmm. And like he says, run to the ball. Uh, I know coaches uh, defense and he preaches that same thing. You can tell a team that runs the ball covers up a lot of mistakes, you know, as, as long as you're getting after the ball and you're trying to put a hat on the ball carrier. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's still a work in progress and, and, you know, every week it'll be that way. Mm -hmm. Now do you base out of an even front or odd front? On well, we're a slant four, four okay. is the base. I mean, we're, it, it, it it's out of an odd front, but it slants into an even front. I gotcha. Um, so I mean that's, and it's just trying to take advantage of the people that I've, in the last, you know, dozen or so years that we have routinely, which are, like hardworking kids, maybe a little undersized to play a, team, you know, a type of forty defense where you're just plugging a gap and hold, anchoring down. So for the type of personnel I'm usually get and that's at different high schools it remains the same mm -hmm. those guys got to be run sure. be able to run right. and so maybe they're a little oversized linebacker or something mm -hmm. but our linebackers are small they're like oversized safeties you know and our safeties are like oversized corners mm -hmm. is kind of you know how, what we use as far as personnel there mm -hmm. can you give us a scouting report on summit tonight yeah you know we, we expect a you know a, you know a, a, a good game and we expect these guys, again, well coached. Coach, coach knows what he's doing. They're getting better each week. We expect them. They're a lot like, uh, you know, maybe us on the, uh, the, the lines where, you know, undersized a little bit, but guys that want to get after it a little bit. And they run, they run the ball well. They did a good job disguising some things last week against Page. And we know we're going to come out with similar formations uh, that Page ran. Uh, and... Um, so we, we expect a well-coached, well-disciplined, heated team that, you know, would like nothing more than to uh, knock off the uh, school from about five miles away. <laughs> Coach Keesler, would you say that you're 70-30 or 60-40 run versus pass on oh, offense? We run the football. We struggle to throw it a little bit, uh -huh. um, and that's, you know, it presents some problems. Um, but we're working on it. we uh, got a young quarterback. Um, uh, I, heck, man, I'd say we're 90% run right now. Okay. So that's a lot, I right, know, but right. you do what you can. Right, now, exactly. You, you do what you can. Yeah. Coach Blake, you guys? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It's the same offense that I've ran. This is the eighth year, really the mirrored offense. And 
you know, I think at the end of the year, I'd like to see, I'd like to see a 60-40 run to pass. And the teams that have done well have had about that ratio, sure. but they've had the same yards, mm -hmm. which has really been, I mean, I remember last year, it was almost the same within 100 yards uh, at the end of the year. And I'll be honest with you, right now it's probably 75, 25 or 70, 30 pass to run. Mm -hmm. um, our, run our passing game sets up, uh, helps out our run game, mm -hmm. uh, where you know a lot of people it's the run sets up the pass. I think we're probably opposite in that. Um, and our short passes, um, quick screens, bubbles, those are an extension of our run game. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, so it's like, it, you know, uh, that is part of our run here, sure. you know. Sure. Coach Kiesler, who has to play well for you tonight in order to have an opportunity to win this football game? Oh, we've got to play a special, special game all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be very inspired uh, and believe in ourselves. Uh, obviously, you know, our, our tailback D hunters had two good weeks, you know, our best athlete. Uh, but, I, f I mean, we've got to play, I don't want to say perfect, but, but pretty close in all three mm -hmm. phases of the football game. Right. Uh, and we're working on it. Like I said, we've had we had a good day, a uh, good two days of practice, so or three days of practice. And um, we've just, I mean, as a team, as a unit, we've got to go in there and play like, not perfect, but close to it uh, mm -hmm. to compete with them. We realize that, but that's the goal. You know, you go in, we're going to go in to try to win the football game. Every game we we play, every game I coach, that's going to be the goal, no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, so as a team, we've got to play well. Have you noticed maybe a different type of? Uh I don't know, if say an attitude or an atmosphere, but you are playing independent, yes. and these kids, I mean, it seems like they'd be they excited. They realize it, and I, I hear about it. it. Frustrates the heck out of me. You start hearing about everyone talking and the tweeting and all the Facebook, and I don't do any of that, by the way. I, and um, the game's going to be played on the field. Sure. Um, so that kind of, like I said, frustrates me. All the talking going on. It's it's kids. And heck, I mean, right now it's a lot of the parents. I mean, they're all having fun with this, and the community is having fun with this. But um, you know, them being independents down the road, we split from them. Everyone knows. Everyone knows that this is the first time, you know, first opportunity we get to play, and we actually had a jamboree with them last year. But it's totally different. It's gonna be on Friday night on TV. Uh, there's a different feel around the school. There's definitely a different feel. But the game will be won or lost on the football field, um, and that's my only concern. Mm -hmm. Is anything special going on tonight, Coach Blade? Or well, it's our homecoming week. Okay. So all week it's been uh, a little crazy, um, different spirit days, and uh, today there's several potential, uh, you know, uh, distractions. You know, with the, all the homecoming festivities and sure. stuff that goes on during the school day. Um, but we're, you know, putting them on lockdown, so to speak, after school's over, and we'll do our best to get back into us as close to a normal game routine as possible. Um, so, but it has been a crazy week around campus. Right, right. Well, this is the first district game for both both everybody. I know Ravenwood's off tonight. Uh, but just how important is the district games versus all the other games, Coach Keesley? I think every game's important, um, especially the way the playoff system is set up. Uh, they're all of equal importance. Um, but, you know, be, for us, it's the first district game in this district we've ever played. Sure. Um, yeah, it doesn't really, like I said, change the importance. They're all important. But um, you want to go out and you want to try and make a mark in your first district game. Uh, and that's what we're going to set out to do. You know, we're going to go out and play as hard as we can, try to get better, uh, give them our best shot. Uh, you know, we believe we have an opportunity if we go out and get some things done and, and uh, maybe capitalize on some mistakes. I, I know he's not planning on making any, mm -hmm. and we're hoping he will. So I mm -hmm. think vice versa. But, um, it's important, very important. Coach Blake? It's uh, the, you know, I, I'm same boat as him. Every game's important, and especially with a seven team district. You got four non conference games. I mean, that are, I mean, so it's every week is important. And the way the playoffs work is you could be, you know, six and oh in your district games and lose to non conference teams, and you're a six and four team, and you're traveling. You could be district champs in traveling. So every game, and we try and stress that to our kids. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, it is a district game. Uh, it's it's uh, all that, but it is the next game on our schedule that you know we need to be you know uh, to get us where we want to get. And that's just the way the playoffs are set up. So it makes every game uh, 
just of utmost importance. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but obviously district is district and um, uh, huge importance, but I'm, I'm with coach, it's, they're all mm -hmm. important. Do you like the way the playoffs are set up, Coach Blake? No, not particularly, no. You enjoy the five classifications and with the yeah. region format where you yes. kind of know the one through four, those guys are going to go play yes. the other region. Well, I enjoy that, but I, I, what I'd probably rather see is honest, you know, when you, you know, you, you have east, east and west, mm -hmm. and I'd rather see them seed one through 16 and one through 16 in east and west and forget about, and we had last year, I had a nine and one, nine and one playing in the first round. Oh, so and yeah. the top, in both in the top five in the state in the first round. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I, I'd say forget about the, you know, the geography. Um, you te you know, now that, that's my opinion. My opinion means nothing except for, I like one through 16 in middle to west, one through 16 east to middle, you draw the line. I guess it goes somewhere through Murfreesboro, mm -hmm. um, and then I'd rather see that. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you're getting, you had, a, you know, and each year it's different, but like last year in that quadrant one for 6A was absolutely loaded. Right. I mean, you had 10 and 0 teams, nine and one, all in that one quadrant. Um, and then you had some lessers in other quadrants that are going on and advancing. I, you know, I think at the end of the day, you want to see, you know, your, one and two in the semifinals. Right. One and two in the semifinals. You want to see one and one, um, and that, that's my opinion. It means right. nothing, um, but uh, you asked, so I <laughs> gave you my. <laughs> well, back on tonight's game, homecoming festivities. Is it before the game starts? Or is it going to be at halftime, Coach? Yeah, first year doing it, so I know yeah. everybody does it differently. I, I assume there's some halftime stuff. Our kids uh -huh. won't be involved in that. A lot of the uh, stuff uh, is going on during the day. And I'm, I'm just hoping I can, you know, get them to the other side, so I, to speak. I understand. Well, coaches, thank you for being here today. Good luck tonight. Hope everybody stays healthy. Best of luck the rest of the season. Yes, Thanks, sir. Jack. Tonight's game at Independence High School starts at 7 o'clock, Coach. Yes, sir. 7 o'clock. It's homecoming at Independence. Hope to see you at the game tonight. Thank you. I'm Jack Daniels, your host. Too many of Tennessee's students drop out of high school. If you ask them why, you'll probably hear they just can't keep up because they don't have the reading skills. Success in school is based on success in reading, and learning to read starts with hearing words. With young children, storybook reading, particularly family storybook reading, plays a special and important role. Had a great, what's the last word? Mom. Good. Have fun with reading. Read the directions on the box and bake a cake together. Create a scrapbook, write a family cookbook, or a newsletter. <laughs> that looks like you. Um, what about the triangle? A triangle face? Work with your child to cut coupons and make a grocery list. Write thank you notes to grandparents. Read a book about different occupations. Then ask your child what they would like to be when they grow up. Ah, you could be, maybe. What about an eye doctor, just like your granddaddy? My eye doctor is much more. Um, he works with some glasses. He does work with some glasses. Don't underestimate the impact that reading can have on your child's future. Choose success. Choose reading. This Choose Success moment has been brought to you by the Middle Tennessee P16 Council. For more information about children and reading, contact your local school system.